Mexico City. Enormous, yet charming. Hectic and peaceful. Gritty, yet colorful, both rich and poor. It is the largest city in North America with a metropolitan area of over 21 million. Once the capital of the Aztecs, a city where engineering, architecture, technology, and art flourished at the same time that Europe remained in the Dark Ages, it became the first stop in the New World and now reflects that blend of indigenous and Spanish culture at every turn. Join me as I spend seven days exploring this exciting metropolis. Hi, I'm Alfie. In 2020, the pandemic struck, my father died suddenly, and my six-year relationship came to an end. I fell into a severe depression and decided I needed a change in order to heal and find some joy in life again. So I quit my teaching job, packed my bags, and left small town New Jersey to travel south of the border, practice my Spanish, and start this travel vlog. I'll share all my adventures, travel tips, and hopefully inspire you to visit these places as well. This is Gringo Interrupted. Day seven. Last day in Mexico City. We're going to explore a couple more neighborhoods today. We're gonna to walk through Juarez, the Zona Rosa, and also the Monument of Revolution, and San Rafael and Santa Maria La Ribera. It's gonna be a day of walking and enjoying this beautiful city on your last day. I'm wearing my new t-shirt that I bought. Isn't it cute? Here we go. Start your day at El Pendulo. Half bookstore and half restaurant, El Pendulo has several locations around the city, including this one in the Zona Rosa. Have some breakfast and browse their bookstore before exploring the neighborhood. I got a lovely cappuccino and this apple strudel, which was delicious. This part of the Juarez neighborhood is called the Zona Rosa or Pink Zone. A once bohemian and artist-centered neighborhood, the name Zona Rosa was given to it by resident artist Jose Luis Cuevas, who preferred the name Zona Rosa to Zona Roja, which would translate to Red Light District. Today, Zona Rosa is home to Mexico City's gay community. Walk up to Paseo de la Reforma, one of the city's main thoroughfares. You will immediately see El Ángel de la Independencia, or as it is commonly called simply, El Ángel. Built in 1910 to commemorate the centennial of the War of Independence, it contains a mausoleum under the base, housing the remains of 14 heroes of that war. Crowning the column of the monument is the 22-foot statue of Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. Made of bronze and covered with 24 karat gold, the angel was recently restored in 2006.
there are no crosswalks to get to the traffic circle where the monument is located, so you kind of just have to pray, run across the street, and hope for the best. Continue east on Paseo de la Reforma, the wide avenue that runs diagonally throughout the city and was modeled after the great boulevards of Europe. The promenade contains many of the city's tallest buildings as well as small parks and artwork. The many traffic circles, called Glorietas, are home to numerous monuments. Cross busy in Sorgentes Avenue and make a right on Roma Street. You're now in the eastern section of Juarez. Wander around this historic neighborhood, once a haven for the wealthy, and notice the old mansions that have since been converted into businesses or abandoned. There are a few museums in the neighborhood. You have your choice of the Museum of Wax, Ripley's Believe It or Not, or what I chose, the Museo de... Chocolate. Mucho, Museo de Chocolate, is a museum dedicated to chocolate. Upon entering, you're offered a raw cocoa bean. Mmm. The museum details the history of chocolate, which of course originated with the indigenous people of Mexico and was first introduced to Europeans by the Aztecs. Besides a ton of technical and historical information, you'll also find vintage chocolate products, chocolate sculptures, and a small room with walls entirely lined with chocolate. Continue walking east through Juarez, making your way towards the Monument to the Revolution. If you're enjoying this video, please check out my other ones and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. The weather is so perfect today. It's like 75, sunny, love it. you'll come to Paseo de la Reforma again. Notice this glorieta where the statue of Columbus once stood. The recent backlash towards controversial historical figures has not escaped Mexico, hence the removal of this statue. The Monument to the Revolution is considered to be the tallest triumphal arch in the world at 220 feet. Originally intended to be the Federal Legislative Palace, construction began in 1910, 
but was halted for 25 years due to the Mexican Revolution. When construction began again, its purpose was altered to serve as a monument. Five heroes of the Mexican Revolution are entombed here. The main highlight here is the views from the top, but first you can explore the foundations of the monument, which includes a museum. The monument was purposely designed in the neoclassical style with characteristic touches of the French Renaissance in an effort to demonstrate Mexico's status as an advanced nation. Your first stop is the terrace right under the dome. As a bonus, the speakers are churning out instrumental versions of recent pop hits. I'm just gonna can't stop, won't stop Exit the plaza on its north side and make a left on Thomas Edison. Once you cross Insurgentes Avenue, you're now in the San Rafael neighborhood. A mix of socioeconomic classes and architectural styles, this neighborhood was the first formal neighborhood outside the city center to cater to the wealthy. I absolutely love these grand old mansions now covered in graffiti. It's very 80s New York City. Make a right on Serapio Rendon and continue until you're struck with this grand Art Deco masterpiece. A testament to San Rafael's former glory as a theater mecca, the Cine Opera was built in 1949 as a movie theater during the golden age of Mexican cinema. Closed in 1998, the building today is shrouded in local lore, including a bunch of ghost stories. Plans to revitalize the building have all fallen through. I really hope it's not torn down. Cross busy Ribera de San Cosme Avenue and enter the Santa Maria La Ribera, another neighborhood filled with beautiful urban decay. Unfortunately, rumors are this neighborhood will be the next to gentrify.
On your right, you'll pass the stunning church, La Sagrada Familia. Dating from 1899, its Byzantine-style exterior is a rare jewel in the neighborhood. Time for lunch, and we're going to Chilla Killers, one of my favorite places. Chilla Killers is no longer here. That's why you look things up before you come, because in three years, a lot can happen. Since Chilla Killers was closed, I decided on a fonda for lunch. These no-frill fondas are always satisfying, serving a basic four-course meal for a very low price. I have found that the more religious art there is inside, the better the food tastes. Soup, salad, enchiladas with mole, and fruit for dessert. All for 85 pesos. Continue walking straight until you reach the Alameda Santa Maria La Ribera with its unique centerpiece, the Kiosco Morisco, or Moorish Kiosk. Built as the Mexican pavilion for the 1884 World's Fair in New Orleans, and then eventually moved here, the kiosk is built in the Neo-Mudejar style, which at the time was prevailing in Spain. Completely made of wrought iron with a glass cupola dome, the kiosk is a beloved icon of the neighborhood. Head back the way you came on Santa Maria La Ribera and make a left on Alzate. Cross Insurgentes Avenue and try not to get hit by the bus like I almost did. On your left, you'll find the Biblioteca Vasconcelos or Vasconcelos Library. While it may not look like much on the outside, this will undoubtedly be the coolest library you'll ever see. Dedicated to Jose Vasconcelos, philosopher and former president of the National Library of Mexico, the library spans some 409,000 square feet. Well, if you made it this far, congratulations, because that was a lot of walking. But that's it for your last day in Mexico City. From here, you can take the subway, is right here at Buena Vista. You can take the Metro bus right up here on Insurgentes, or you can always grab an Uber back. I hope you enjoyed my seven day, seven part Mexico City series. There's gonna be uh, more videos to come of some day trips that I've done and some other cool places in Mexico City that if you have more days here, you'll wanna check out. Thanks for watching. Adios.
mejor. 